Hi, this is Mr. Baglio, and I'm going to show you how to enroll in a class and then do an activity on the site explorelearning.com. So, first, you go into your browser and you type in explorelearning.com. This will take you to the main page, and what you need to do is enroll in a class. On my website, you will have been given an enrollment code. This would be different for each of the sections of my class. So what I did is I copied it and now I will paste it into this box. The code, as you can see, is a sequence of 10 letters and numbers. Then I will hit continue. I'm in the process of enrolling in the B-Band class. So I could either click I already have an Explore Learning account or I need to create an Explore Learning account. In all of your cases, you will probably need to create an Explore Learning account. So click the green bar. Then you could put in your personal information. Okay. So First name Isaac, last name Newton, email address I Newton, and then a number. Doesn't really need to be, but just to make sure it's unique, and put in a password that you will remember. And then submit. Then, if you see this screen, it means you successfully enrolled in the class. And you'll see a tab that says B-Band as well as B-Band Science and the activity. Any activities that I will have set out for you will be here. In this case it is Moment of Inertia. Let's click on it. So this is what it looks like. If you click on the picture it will launch the gizmo. It takes a minute to load but then once it loads, you have this interactive science experiment on the screen. If it doesn't load, one of the most common problems is that you do not have Shockwave, Flash Shockwave, or you do not have an up-to-date version of Shockwave. And it will tell you that. Then it will walk you through the process of downloading a new version of it and installing it. You do need an up-to-date version of Shockwave in order to do this simulation. The reason I was doing this one is because it corresponds with the reading that we're going to be doing on rotational inertia. Rotational inertia, by the way, means the same thing as moment of inertia. I know, it's sort of confusing, but that's the way they do it. And specifically, this allows you to press play to activate it, and you end up seeing how fast it spins. If you click linear velocity, it's going 20 meters per second. And then you could stop it with the pause key, reset it with the rewind key. Specifically, I want you to look at the difference between a disk and a ring. Because a disk is sort of a standard solid wheel. A ring is a wheel in which most of the ins uh, well, a ring is a wheel in which most of the inside is hollowed out. For example, a bike wheel has a ring and it has spokes. So the spokes hold it together, but most of the mass of the bike tire is out around the outer ring. And so what I want you to do is to put it out to the maximum mass and the maximum radius and then launch at 200 joules and see which goes faster, the ring or the disc of similar mass and dimensions. This says a lot about what are important factors in doing a mousetrap car wheel. And also, what's the difference in how fast it goes if you have a relatively small wheel? For example, a small disc. That's a small CD wheel versus a large CD wheel. And you can really see what the factors are that if you're putting in the same amount of energy, remember we all only have one mousetrap to work with, what is the fastest wheel? If you have any questions, of course you can email me and once you're enrolled, all you have to do is remember your username and password, and any time that we have a gizmo-related assignment, then you can do it 
online. Thanks very much.